common issue that I see popping up in lucid dreaming circles are people complaining about how increasingly frustrated they are becoming with lucid dreaming and not being able to do it despite the amount of work they feel they are putting in. Now I'm sure all Ironauts have been here at some point, whether it's at the beginning of your journey and finding the right methods and techniques is taking a long time or perhaps during a dry spell when all of the techniques that seem to work well before just don't quite have the same effect. One thing I find with lucid dreaming is typically when people discover it, it's this very novelty thing and they get really excited and they want to learn how to do it then and there. Uh, without really taking into account the amount of work they may have to put in to attain lucidity. Once people start to put that work in and realise that it might require a great deal of their time, they typically throw in the towel. People aren't always willing to put in the amount of daytime practice that is typically required with dream-induced lucid dreaming. Or, if people prefer to go down the wild route, I find people get fed up pretty quickly of trying to figure out their, their REM cycles and the right time for them to wake up and the right time for them to attempt to enter the dream consciously. For a really long time I was struggling with lucid dreaming and I couldn't figure out why. In my mind I was putting in a lot of work, or at least it seemed like I was putting in a lot of work. But what I ended up doing was creating something I called my lucid journal and I kept this for maybe about two to three weeks and basically what I did was I wrote down everything that I was doing during the day that went towards my lucid dreaming. And what I realised was I wasn't really putting in as much work as I thought I was. And in all honesty, if you're somebody who is practising lucid dreaming and feeling that they aren't really getting any results, chances are you probably aren't doing as much as you thought you were. Now I understand that might sound very disheartening, especially if it feels like you are really trying and nothing's happening. But if you take a moment to really look at all the things that you are doing towards lucid dreaming, you might realise that you just weren't putting in as much work as you thought you were. So I'm just going to read like a little bit of my lucid journal just so you get an idea of, of what I'm talking about. So. 11.45 a.m. Woke up later than expected. 12.30 p.m. Suddenly became aware of my surroundings. Walked around my living room, felt the walls and the sofa. Took more notice of my breathing and my movement. Questioned if I was dreaming. Checked my tattoo and did the finger through the palm. I was awake. I quickly thought about what it would be like if I was dreaming. 11.10 p.m. Sat in the car. I had a sudden spark of awareness again. I looked carefully at everything I went past. 4.08pm. Walked past an arcade and saw a toy crane machine. Reality checked. I was awake. 4.45pm. Decided to try and nap. Listened to nature sounds. Kept drifting in and out of consciousness. I saw a few strange and vivid shapes behind my eyelids, but as soon as I became aware of them, I seemed to wake up. 4.45pm. Never got any sleep. Decided to give up for now. Went to the bathroom, reality checked. 8.58pm. Spent some time on dream views, reading various posts on attaining lucidity and dream control. 12.30am. Went to sleep, repeated mantra from previous night. Now for some reason I haven't written down what mantra that was. 5.18am. Uh, Joe came round after work, this woke me up. I took 500mg of choline instead. Used the bathroom but forgot to reality check. Joe went to bed. I found it hard to fall back asleep. 11.55am. Woke up later than I wanted to again. I was woken up several times due to Joe moving about. This annoyed me greatly. However, I had one lucid dream so I can't complain. I got up, used the bathroom, reality checked and wrote down my dreams in my journal. And that night I had five to six non-lucid dreams and one lucid dream. So that's just an example of the things that I did. I made sure to document when I reality checked, to document when I practiced awareness or when I suddenly became aware of my surroundings, documented when I tried to nap, documented when I did visualization and stuff like that, and uh, documented if I took any supplements, you know, things of that nature. And as I did this for a few weeks, I saw that on the days where I did less, I was less likely to have a lucid dream. 
I also noticed that with reality checks, sometimes there were maybe like five to six hours between each reality check. I maybe only did three or four throughout that day. Doing this made me realise just how much work I was or wasn't putting into lucid dreaming. And at the time, because it was quite early on in my lucid dreaming journey, I still required a lot of daytime practice in order to get lucid on a night. Now I've said many times before, you know, I don't feel I have to do as much as I used to do anymore. But obviously, you know, if I don't do anything at all, it does affect my uh, chances of getting lucid. You could kind of compare this to, to dieting and, and trying to get healthy. A lot of the time when you first start dieting or changing your, your diet or changing your exercise routine, it feels quite daunting at first. And a lot of the time, it feels like you're putting in a lot of work, but you probably aren't. For example, you know, I, I've been trying for a while to lose weight now and I've seen no results and I keep thinking to myself, well I'm not eating as much as I used to, I'm exercising more. But when I actually stop and look, it's not quite true. I may have changed a few of my eating habits, but I still order a lot of takeaway, I still kind of comfort eat. Um, you know, I think I'm exercising, but when I document how much exercise I'm doing, I realise it's probably been like two weeks since I went on a long walk, it's been about a month since I actually lifted any weights. Uh, you know, in my mind I keep thinking, yeah, I'm doing really good, I'm putting loads of work in, but when I stop and actually look at those things, I'm really not doing hardly anything at all. So as I said, I know that might seem very disheartening when it feels like you're putting in a lot of work, but I would suggest that if you're going through a dry spell or you're struggling with lucidity at the moment, to maybe for about two or three weeks do what I did and document all the various things you are doing towards getting lucid. And that way you'll be able to pick up on any patterns, you'll be able to see what things are working and not working. Because again, when I was doing that, I noticed days when I focused on awareness and visualisation, I tended to have more success with lucid dreaming and I think that's because uh, I'm, I'm quite a very visual person and doing visualisation and imagining myself getting lucid, imagining what I would do right now if this was a dream, have been very very helpful tools for me when it comes to getting lucid and staying lucid. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, you know, I understand for a lot of people it might be quite annoying to hear that you aren't doing as much work as you thought you were, but you know, it really is a good idea to stop and, and just look at what you're doing. I'd just like to take this moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Um, you know, I'm really, really grateful for the people who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you know, as I've said before, you know, even if someone gave me a dollar, that would be, like, amazing to me. Like, I'm actually completely blown away that people even want to support me on Patreon. So, I, you have my absolute gratitude for that. So, thank you very much, you guys. And with that being said, I'm going to leave the video there for today. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I have been Max, a.k.a. the Rara Rabbit. And I'll see you in the next video.